Welcome back to TK Tennis. We're talking about heavy rackets again, and we're back in the same spot as the last time, so this is part two. I wanted to do a follow-up because some people made some comments that uh, the tennis nerd Jonas wasn't really advocating for heavier rackets. Um, he happened to make a second video for our heavier rackets better, so I wanted to address a few things and those people that commented that he really wasn't advocating for heavier rackets. So let me have you watch this first clip. But my point was uh, something I, I wanted to address that I replied to certain comments was that even my mother, who's a complete beginner, plays better, hits more normal shots, the same for your wife, right? With, uh, with a little bit heavier swing weight, not 360 swing weight, but at least straight 320, 325 strong. As you can see there, Jonas was talking about his mother, who is a beginner, using a racket with 320 to 325 swing weight. So I'm not gonna tell you he's wrong. Maybe his mom, as a beginner, is more comfortable using a racket that's a little bit heavier. That, that may be true. I'm just advocating that if you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't be playing with a racket that's heavier in most cases. So let me give you two examples. The first case is my wife. So my wife was a former top collegiate female tennis player. She's still a 5-0 today, and she still hits the snot out of the ball. So we went through a racket journey with her for about a year where she was using many different rackets and she currently uses the Vocal PB4. The racket's about 12 to 15 years old. It has a swing weight of 302 and it's a slightly extended racket at 27.6. She tried dozens and dozens of rackets and at the end of the day she decided I'm sticking with the PB4 with a 302 swing weight. She was much more comfortable using that racket because every time she would use a racket with 315, 320, 325 swing weight, because I was on the same train, like thinking she needs a heavier racket so that she can hit a ball that's a little bit heavier. But the problem was, as great as her form is, once in a while, let's say 10% of the time, when I would catch the ball just right with the right amount of spin, and she would have to adjust to that a little bit of extra top spin, she could never catch up to the ball on those heavier rackets, and she'd end up hitting the ball late. So the second example is my own. I also went through that journey at the same time looking to choose new rackets. I ended up settling on the Head Gravity Pro. It was an incredible racket. I knew it from the first few shots that I hit. That racket was fantastic for me. It was 334 swing weight and it felt as solid as could be. And I fell in love with the idea of heavier rackets feel more solid, they feel great. But within a week or two, I started developing tennis elbow. And it was the first time in my life I've ever developed tennis elbow. But I suffered with that tennis elbow for a year because I loved the way that racket felt. But what became very clear is when I would play matches or I would play points and I would have to adjust to the ball, I would end up hitting the ball a little bit late some of the time. And that some of the time hitting the ball late would end up causing me tennis elbow. We came down to a gravity MP and that cured with some rehab. My tennis elbow went away and everything was fine. I still miss the Gravity Pro, but I realized then that even at a fairly advanced level, I could not handle that racket. Okay, so let's move on to clip number two. This is where Jonas is talking to his friend that was also on the video. Take a look at this clip. Right? Yeah, so. I see a lot of beginners that basically play badminton because yep. the rackets are so light and then they're pushing the ball around like on the badminton court, which is bad for the arm yep. at the end. Uh, one comment I saw was like, okay, uh, it can hurt your arm. It can if you have bad technique, but if your technique is good, more mass will help reduce vibrations and therefore reduce pain in the arm. Okay, in that clip you can clearly see where he's talking about players looking like they're playing badminton because of light rackets. If you're going to look like you're playing badminton, that has nothing to do with the racket's heavy or light. And those players should use whatever racket makes them feel the most comfortable and allows them to hit the ball out in front. The second thing is addressing injuries. Do you get injured more with lighter rackets versus heavier rackets? This is my perspective on it, and I think it's very clear. The way you get injured is two things. Either you have a problem with your equipment, maybe you have the wrong racket, you're using poly strings when you should be using multi-filaments, or your strings are too tight. That could cause tennis elbow. But the number one reason you is bad form, like they mentioned on the video. And bad form ultimately comes down to, are you hitting the ball late? And that ends up being bad form. So you could be a 5-5 player or a 6-0 player or a pro level player, and you could hit a shot with bad form. It happens all the time. And they have to absorb that impact. Now, if it just happens occasionally, 
you're not going to get an injury most likely. But the lower level player you are, the more likely you have bad form, and that's going to cause injuries more than anything else. So if you use a heavier racket and you can hit it out in front with good form, more power to you. Use that heavier racket. But if you find yourself hitting the ball late because of the having a heavy racket, then use a lighter racket because everybody needs to adjust to the ball. Not everybody has perfect footwork. As a matter of fact, nobody has perfect footwork and nobody hits the ball right where they want to every single time. So if a heavier racket causes you to hit the ball a little bit off center more often because you can't adjust to the spin and that those last millisecond adjustments that you need to make, then you should be going down to a lighter racket. But again, if you can handle the heavier racket and you like the feeling of the heavier racket, by all means do it. My biggest problem with the advocation of heavier rackets is that it's just a blanket statement that people play better with heavier rackets. That is just not true. It's true for some people and it's not true for most other people in my opinion. So that's my video for today. I do want to commend on that video, I thought it was great that they also mentioned that if you are going to customize your racket, you should first, instead of throwing lead into the hoop, is that you should add weight into the handle first and work on the balance of your racket. I did a whole video on that last week and I think that's a really important point that they brought up and I think it's something that people don't talk about enough. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you soon.